it is I, Republic Studs here, with another video, and this is going to be my collectible minifigure series ideas video. Now, there are a lot of rumors that um, Star Wars is going to be getting a CMF series, and these are basically my top picks for what a potential 2021 collectible minifigures wave would look like. Um, I want to stem a bit from each era, and I choose at least one thing from every medium in the canon, and one at least one uh, from every era. Star Wars with the movies, I try to do three to four. With the shows I and spinoffs, I at least do one spinoff movie. But with that said, let's get into it, and please make sure to subscribe. But let's get into it. Our first pick is from the prequels. We're going to be going in order in lore order. Is Phase 2 Commander Cody. He is the only figure, like, really, that Lego's already made, but they're going to be making it again. This is the obvious pick for number one. I just don't even need to explain why. Everyone wants Commander Cody. He should have came out forever ago, Phase 2 Cody. But I think Cody will look cool in the new style of Clone Trooper that we see on the 501st Legion Clone Trooper. I personally believe his accessories would be that jetpack he wears, as long with a hologram of Darth Sidious from his iconic scene where he orders the clones to execute Order 66. And I think that Commander Cody is the biggest no-brainer for this series. Now, next up, I am shocked this figure has not been made. But at number two, we have Shmi Skywalker, the mother of the Skywalker family, and has yet to be made into Lego somehow. I think she would have no accessories because, like, there's nothing really she can have an accessory. She'd be wearing her regular garbs we see in the movie, and she would definitely be a much-needed inclusion to the LEGO Star Wars line, and the fact that we have not gotten her as the mother of the Skywalker lineage, the biggest family in Star Wars, is quite frankly insane. So hopefully we'll be, we will be seeing her, at least in that, if not in some form, very soon. Coming up after that is a fun pick, but I feel necessary. I chose the legendary Boyo leader, Boss Nas. He is the leader of the Gungan army in episode 1, and the head Boyo, if you will. Uh, he would come with a brand new head mold, obviously, and red capes as well as a snowball piece. And it would, and he, the snowball piece would be kind of clear, and it would represent the peace orb we see him hold in the end of The Phantom Menace. He would also come with like the red cape. Uh, the molds could resemble either it came in the LEGO Star Wars video game, or it could more resemble the one we see in the TV shows. But with that said, let's move in to number uh, four already. Wow. At number four, we are moving into the Clone Wars. And I have a pretty good lineup for this one. But the lineup is starting off with number four, Arc Trooper Jesse. Now, I chose Arc Trooper Jesse over fives and Rex due to the fact that he, um, they, Rex has at least gotten four variations from the uh, Phase 1 version, the Phase 2 version, to Captain Rex's ATTE. And even his Rebellion version we see in the Imperial Shuttle. And Jesse was more relevant and prominent in Season 7, the most recent season, than Fives was. So maybe we can see Fives in a second season, a series that I, I'm definitely going to want to do. And he would come with printed capes and that would resemble the ones that come on the ARC Trooper minifigure that LEGO officially released. And he definitely should be made, and he would probably one of the most coveted figures of the entire series uh, up until the ne very next one number five we have the legendary bo -Katan. the fact she hasn't been made is quite absurd to me well, she would obviously have her jetpack pistols and even a hairpiece so that we could swap that out with the helmet and you could often you know take off the helmet do whatever you want with it and it would definitely be probably the most coveted one of the entire series should definitely be made and considering how prominent she was in rebels even and, and in a majority of the clone wars series i think she should definitely be made moving on from that to the next number which is number six we have gar saxon to counter bo -Katan. we fell in love with his awesome looking armor in season seven of the clone wars and customizers instantly got to work when they saw it he is possibly the coolest looking Clone Wars villain, short of maybe General Grievous or Maul, but definitely the coolest looking original Clone Wars villain. And he came with he would come with a jetpack 
sniper rifle that we see, maybe a new mold because they tend to do these special molds in print for the minifigure series to make them more uh, like uh, detailed. So we probably see that and probably a new helmet mold or attachment to the current Mandalorian helmet. Number seven, we have moved our picks into the dark times, into the Empire's Prime, and this is my only pick for the Star Wars Rebels TV show. And my pick is AP5 from Star Wars Rebels, and he became a member of the Ghost, two, Ghost Crew in the near the end of Season 2. I personally love his character. He is the gray protocol droid. He's the one who, you know, sings in space and does, like, the whole musical. And I love him. He is an amazing character. He is a great companion to uh, to to uh, Chopper. And his accessory, I personally feel, would be a data a data sheet because that he was like an inventory droid, and he would be a fine addition to add to the Ghost Crew and possibly finish them off, which is just amazing. For number eight, we have moved on to Rogue One, which my pick is definitely the hardest, but I decided to go with Saw Gerrera. There are a lot of people to work with from Rogue One that haven't been made into Lego yet, um, such as uh, Galen Erso, Lyra Erso, just many, many more along those lines, many officers and that sort of stuff. But I thought that Saw Gerrera is definitely the most important to be made. Um, and I think for the amount of screen time and marketing he got, he should definitely be a minifigure. And the mini... And uh, CMS series would be a great place to put him because they often really detail out those figures. And I think that would be absolutely perfect and save us the dream, uh, if you will, um, for getting him finally. For number nine, we move to Solo. We move back a bit to Solo to a character that has yet to be made. That is Dryden Voss. Dryden was the main leader of the Crimson Dawn and the main villain of Solo. And he has somehow not been made. Again, which is crazy, but he would have a dual face printing since he is a near human, so they can like change like their face so that way when they're angry it turns red. And he would have a dual sided face, obviously, and his accessory would be potentially a uh, overcoat and his golden laser knives. Now we start off our original trilogy picks with the amazing and beautiful and stupendous Nine Num, the glorious pancake face that we all know and love from the first Battlefront and just from the movies, and obviously that we love him so much. Uh, like, it was only me, Ten Num, two to two variations, uh, mostly came in B-Wings and one A-Wing, I believe, but they have yet to make the favorite pancake face, Nine Num, who is seen in the original movies, in the sequel movies, and yeah, it is in the books, and it's yet to be made in Lego, somehow. I, 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 these honestly all baffle me that they haven't been made. But he would definitely come with a brand new molded head, because I think the print just wouldn't do it a justice, and it's kind of dumb. And his, um, he would have a special pistol, I feel, for his special minifigure in the CMF series. Next up, we have Aunt Beru, Luke's uh, aunt on the moisture farm of Tatooine. Aunt Beru has played a big part in the first movie, and she was also, I believe, in Episode 2 of Star Wars. And considering how Lego's always making Tatooine and original trilogy sets for the last 20 years, it comes as an extreme shock to why they have yet to make Aunt Beru, um, one of the biggest um, r character role models to Luke if we see in Episode 4, if you will. I call it Episode 1. But... I think that she hasn't been made is absurd. Her accessory would be a glass of blue milk, and she would also be much loved by everyone. For our number 12 spot, we have the amazing Wedge Antilles. Wedge is a great pilot we see in three original trilogy movies, and I think it's time for Wedge to come back is long overdue, especially since the last time we saw Wedge, he was still a yellowhead. His accessory should be a hairpiece so that we'd swap it out with the helmet as well as a dual sided face so you know one is the visor and one is the face at number 13 we have the famed rebel general dodana now i know this is a, a bit of a weird pick but i think that the fact that he was a relatively decent sized role in episode four and a big part of many, many battles in the original trilogy and even uh, star wars rebels it, it comes no shock to why i put him here he also is the guy who instructed 
um, the, the Rebel pilots on what the battle plan was for the attack on the Death Star. His accessory would be the Death Star plans, and I know this would be a random inclusion, but I think Lego should definitely be making him. At number 14, we have our first Mandalorian figure. Um, and this one took a lot of consideration because there are still a lot of named characters we have yet to see from the Mandalorian in Lego, but I decided to make this figure Queel. Uh, he's the intelligent Ugnaught, an amazing character in the Mandalorian TV show that we all have come to love, and when he died, we were all very sad. And he's yet to come out in the set. But I feel now is th in, in this type of a format would be the best place to do so. His accessory would be a nice little wrench, and it would have a similar head mold to the Ugnaught, but probably modified for that way you could clip onto the goggles or some things along those lines. And I think he would definitely be a very welcome inclusion to this list. Up now, for number 15, we have a character from Star Wars Resistance. His name is Nikto. Now, a lot of you probably haven't watched Star Wars Resistance, but he is basically one of Kaz's friends, um, Kazuda Siono, who is the main character. And he is this green alien, and he shows up a lot in the show. He's in every episode. And... Well, we don't know him that much, or you probably don't know him that much. I think his accessory should either be his little uh, frog friend that he has in the show, or it should be maybe a battle droid head. He was a mechanic, so I would have put a wrench here, but I already gave one to Squeal. But I think he would definitely be a fun inclusion, and I really liked his character. He was kind of like a Jar Jar Binks, but more, more clueless somehow. But yeah. With that said, let's move into the final figures. At number 16, we are moving into the sequel era um, with Emperor Palpatine from Episode 9. Palpatine was the main villain of the final installment of the Skywalker saga with a new and very scary look. The fact that he wasn't in any of the Winter 2020 sets was shocking. Oh wait, I just realized that. Shocking? Oh, I didn't intentionally do that. If we don't get him, then or something like this, that I don't think we ever will. If we did, it would come with his accessories being his uh, red robes as his print with the scary white eyes on his head print, and along with a black cloak, and with lightning as his accessory, and I definitely think he is a much needed inclusion for this number 16 pick. Now this next one is probably the most obscured pick of the list, at number 17, we have Elo Asti. Uh, he is the Rebel Alien pilot we see in episodes 7, 8, and 9, um, Resistance. And he is what I kind of consider to be the new Wedge Antilles, and I chose him because we see him all throughout the sequel trilogy. He survived the brutal massacre of the Resistance in episode 8, as well as the battle on Starkiller. He survived the duel of Exegol. And he's definitely become one of my favorite background characters. I like him because it's like he's like the only diversity when it comes to alien diversity in the Star Wars franchise. And he definitely needs to be made in Lego. And I really hope he does become made in this series. At our final pick for today, we have Lego Ghost Yoda. Ever since I was younger, and I'm sure everyone has felt this, but everyone has always wanted a Ghost Yoda minifig. They could do this two ways. A, make him a trans clear blue piece um, as his torso and legs. I don't know how exactly they do the head. I'm sure Lego could pull it off. And Or they could make it a completely light blue figure as we've seen them do before. But we have definitely seen Lego do ghost figures in their collectible minifigure series and make all these special hair molds and leg molds, so I don't think this is out of the realm of possibility. And I really hope we'd see it, and if we were to get more series, we'd get Obi-Wan, Anakin, maybe Qui-Gon, maybe even others that we could potentially see, Luke and Leia. That would all be very cool, and it would definitely happen. I'm sure it ha it's just it's a matter of time now. If you enjoyed my picks for all of the Star Wars universe. Now, if this does well, I'm definitely going to be doing more of these because this is really fun. I, there are, like, it was so easy to come up with a list of this. You have no idea. I'd love to do more, such as one done. Every clone, a clone trooper collectible minifigure series. And this one kind of ties it in with every movie, but maybe we do a video games collectible minifigure series, Star Wars video games. 
or we could even do all these other ones, and I have so many ideas, but yeah. With that said, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and if you like this new series, please tell me in the comments down below. But with that said, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Subscribe, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, and stay awesome. Thank you.